So we are here at the Department of Environmental Protection today, this cold January morning, delivering petitions from people in over 16 towns across the state. We have over 250 signatures calling for the main DEP to change its rules around the definition of out-of-state waste and also to take environmental justice into consideration when determining whether there's a public benefit for permitting landfills. There's pressure from a lot of surrounding states right now that are closing down their waste facilities to send their waste up to Maine, which over the past couple decades has enacted a lot of policies and a lot of loopholes that really create an incentive to bring all sorts of waste that are banned from disposal in surrounding states for disposal up here in Maine and it's subsidized in the process. And I'm Hillary Lister, and I'm here with Bill Lippincott and Ed Spencer from Old Town and Elton. And I'm Old Town, Bill is Hamden. Um, I'm Hamden, where there was a landfill. That landfill is closed. We now have the state landfill in West Old Town. It's supposed to be for Maine waste. The trouble is, what is Maine waste? And we're getting an awful lot of stuff that comes from Massachusetts and all of a sudden it's magically transformed into quote-unquote main waste and it gets dumped into our landfill, uses up capacity. And we're trying to change the definition of that so that won't happen anymore. So we've chosen to uh, engage with the uh, Department of Environmental Protection through their own rules which allow for petitioning for uh, rule change. So uh, once we uh, deliver these signatures as a petition. They will have 60 days to uh, initiate uh, hearings to consider these proposed changes. And this has been long-term work from people who are living uh, around a number of these different landfills in the state. The big active one right now that is state-owned but operated by a contract with Casella Waste Systems was recently approved for major expansion and expansion of the type of materials that it's taking. Uh, when the state landfill was first opened, it was with the legislative promise that it would only take main waste. It was supposed to provide capacity for main waste, but by a definition that basically defines main generated waste as any waste that's processed in the state. There are now a couple of industries, including one business, Re-Energy, in Lewiston that almost exclusively focuses on importing construction and demolition debris from out of state, largely Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, quote unquote, processes it in Lewiston, pulls out some recyclable metals, and grinds up the rest, sends it, trucks it up to Old Town where it's mixed to sludge mixed with sludge or used as shaping, grading, construction on the landfill, that ends up getting counted both as recycling and as disposal of main waste. Um, and the same company, Casella, has really helped create a monopoly where local recycling programs have been shut down. It's harder and harder to find sources to re truly recycle materials and so many of our materials that would be recyclable are being funneled into the landfill for disposal. Um, and we're really trying to change the policies that are allowing this to happen and also make sure that the communities where this is happening have a say in this. Consistently, these licenses have been approved with very little community input. Major decisions are made and the people who live by the facilities are only informed of after, after the fact. And the burden, the toxic burden of these operations is being placed unduly on a few communities, including Penobscot Nation, where the leachate from the state landfill is discharged into the Penobscot River with very little testing. There's no testing for PFAS, something that surrounding states are testing their landfill leachate for, and in fact sending it to Maine for disposal since they're being restricted on dumping it into the rivers in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. We recently had a large load of PFAS contaminated landfill leachate discharged into the Kennebec River at the Madison Mill treatment plant. So we're really trying to make sure that these issues are addressed, that the communities who are most impacted have a say, that environmental justice is taken into consideration when licensing these facilities, and we're going to be delivering these 250 plus signatures 
to the department today, and I see that someone else has shown up as well. Uh, yeah, the Penobscot Nation is happy to support this effort. Um, our Director of Natural Resources, John Banks, provided testimony, and, and we supported him in that um, on the bill LD401 uh, in the last session. And we really see this as a natural fit for us to support. Um, Maine is our sacred homeland, and it has been before statehood even, so it makes sense to keep it as clean and pristine um, and certainly not uh, accepting waste from other places. And, uh, and I think this goes hand in hand with the bills in the last session um, having to do with water quality and sustenance fishing. And obviously we're dealing with Juniper uh, Ridge landfill and the um, ramifications on the health of the Penobscot River where we live. So we're happy to be here to support you and glad I made it just in time. <laughs> Thank you so much. No and problem. you mentioned LD 401. Mm -hmm. That's uh, legislation that has been working on that would address the definition of out-of-state waste. Also, um, again, provide for community standing for the people who are impacted most by these <laughs> facilities. Also require testing of the leachate that's coming from these landfills and being disposed of in the rivers right now with hardly any testing or tracking and have an accurate definition of recycling too so the materials that are ending up in landfills aren't being counted as recycling. Um, so I guess with that we're just hoping to raise awareness also in the legislature there's going to be a work session on LD 401 this Friday by the Environment and Natural Resources Committee. There's a lot of pressure from industry to vote down that bill due to concerns that basically the use of these loopholes around main generated waste and recycling have been very profitable for a couple industries. There's concern that this could impact those industries. Um, but we're really trying to raise awareness of the fact that this is a problem that's going unaddressed and if it continues to do so, we're going to just have more problems, more costs, and more health challenges for the people who are living by these facilities down the road. So hoping by addressing it in all these different pathways that we can actually get some action from the state. <laughs> Yes, so we're just delivering these and petitions for rule change. Um, I'm not sure specifically who is in the department. Uh, okay. and I don't know if would it be possible to get a receipt for delivering this. There are over 250, right? Yep. From yep. um, South Jones. Portland to North Alton. Delton, North yeah, Storm. down east. Foxcroft. Up to Dover Foxcroft. What is they petitioning? It's petitioning for change of the definition of main generated waste and the public benefit determination process clarification that if you, if you read that sheet there, both sides, top sheet, both sides, it explains it pretty well. I can date stamp one of these and give you a copy. That'd be great, thank you. And the threshold is actually 150 signatures, yep. so we've got plenty to spare. And we, it, I mean, we could could make it a thousand pretty easily. <laughs> I think this leachate issue is is huge and getting more important all the time because there's just almost no treatment. That takes place, you know, from from the state landfill, goes to the old town mill, gets aerated. They take out some BODs, and then when it's released into the river, it's only tested for less than ten substances. But it's never been tested for PFAS. You know, no, this, it that never has on the it's, radar. It's not tested for lead yeah. anymore. Yeah. Uh, and it's, so it's the mercury very testing limited. requirements that were rolled back pretty significantly. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Right, so that's a that's a problem, and uh, it's just going to just going to continue to to get worse unless something's done with it. We should probably stress that um, our intent is uh, to work with the department and others to affect these changes for the benefit of all the people of the state of Maine, and so we're we're not here as adversaries, but we're here. We are here as concerned citizens who, who insist on some, uh, we pay some attention 
to this and initiate some uh, some uh, hearings to uh, consider our, our ideas. Yeah, and, and we feel that DEP would like to do the right thing, um, but there's a lot of political pressure, pressure, so that's why we've got to raise awareness so that people in the state know that what's going on.